you're following along in your missiles this evening, I'm not sure if your missiles would have this Mass, but you can check in the back. Uh, it would be the devotional feast of the Holy Lands and Nails, and it's the Mass that's specifically made for the Friday after the first Sunday of Lent. Today there are also a couple of other saints whom we just invoked. Uh, saint Mary, Clement Mary Hofbauer is a very interesting saint. And just one little anecdote about him, how he used to, as a, I think as a, as a young, uh, young man, would go, he was very devoted to uh, the Blessed Sacrament, and oftentimes he would go to kneel before the tabernacle. And even times he said, uh, that he would go behind the altar. In some churches, you see, such as at St. Gertrude's, the server and priest enter from behind the altar, um, and from right behind the altar you can see the tabernacle. And so that was the case in the church where St. Clement was. So he would often kneel right behind the altar, because, as he said, I can hear our Lord better that way. And on one particular occasion, as he was kneeling there praying, he was praying for a certain conversion. And there was a nun who had walked back there and overheard what he was saying. He was begging with our Lord for this one particular soul. He says, and he said to our Lord, give me that soul. Give me this soul. And it, as he keeps begging and begging, he finally says, in the humor and the boldness of the saints, he said, give me this soul, or else I'm going to tell your mother. And the prayer was granted, and there was no need to ask uh, Our Lady, even though all these graces pass through Our Lady. But today, though, what uh, it's interesting how the two feasts coincide. They, it doesn't always happen this way, but we're celebrating the Lenten devotional feast of the Lance and the Nails, but it's also the feast of St. Longinus, who was the one who pierced our Lord's side, his sacred heart. And uh, in the Gospel of today's Mass, it describes this scene. And you can, you can picture it. So everything's getting dark. It's that hour, and all of nature is sad because mankind has killed its God. It's creator. And so the sun has stopped shining and the wind is blowing and the earth quakes and the, the stones are, are rent and the sky is dark. And everyone's getting quite afraid. And so to hurry up the scene, because the soldiers who are on duty there, they couldn't leave the site of execution until they were certain that the criminals were dead. And so whenever they had to leave, uh, to make sure they were dead, they would always break the criminal's leg. They'd hit it with some sort of a, uh, a hammer or something and break their, their legs. That's what they did to St. Dismas, who was a good thief, and also the, the evil, but the bad thief. But then Long Longinus came to our Lord, and he wasn't yet a Christian. He was inspired not to break his legs. As it says in the Gospel today, he didn't break his legs. Instead, he took his, his spear, his lance. And St. John tells us, he chooses his words very wisely. Every word is inspired by the Holy Ghost in sacred scripture. He didn't merely pierce the side. He opened it. And then... He struck the sacred heart, and it says that blood and water came out. Now, St. Longinus, at that point, he had an eye affliction. He couldn't see out of one eye. So when he opened up the side, there was this gushing out, a, a real pouring out of blood and water, not just drips or just running down the side. It was a, an inundation of blood and water. And some of our Lord's blood falls on Longinus' eye, and he immediately sees. And then that, by that miracle, 
then he, the eyes of his faith are open, and he recognizes that this man on the cross, this is God. And that is when he, he made his profession of faith truly, it says in the gospel, truly this man was the Son of God. Now, after this was done, and he was now a faithful disciple of our Lord, he was one of the soldiers whom Pilate put to guard our Lord's tomb when our Lord was buried. So his job wasn't over yet. And so he, he sat there by our Lord's tomb, and you know how it goes. The chief priests and everyone, they were offering bribes to the soldiers because they, they were afraid that um, the disciples would come away and take our Lord's body and then tell everyone that our Lord had risen from the dead. So, so they, they told him actually, here's some money. That's the story you give. So you see, I think they did believe that our Lord was God. They hated him so much though, they couldn't stand to see others follow him. So they made up this story. But Longinus would not take the bride. Instead, he went out and began preaching our Lord crucified. And uh, they say that he went to a, another country and uh, became either a monk or a bishop. And uh, then as he was captured, he was going to be executed under this certain governor who himself was blind. This is an interesting little story too. Well, it says that they, they knocked out Longinus' teeth and then cut out his tongue as a sort of uh, just a way of torturing him. And then as he was bleeding, some of his blood fell on the governor who was blind. And immediately he saw too and uh, was healed and perhaps and most probably he himself converted. But it's a, a beautiful story of St. Longinus and the process of his, his conversion. It all started at the foot of the cross. But one little meditative thought to leave you with from St. Thomas Aquinas on the opening of our Lord's blessed side. He says that you notice that the side was opened, not just pierced, it was opened. And two things came out, blood and water. The blood, you're meant to think of two, sim two sacraments here. The blood, the precious blood of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, and the water, which cleanses the soul in baptism. But he says, blessed are all those who enter into the side of our Lord. Because he says, a symbol of this was the ark and the door, the door that was opened before the flood. All who entered in to that ark, through that door, were saved from all of the waters. And so anyone who enters in through the open side of our Lord and rests in his sacred heart, they too will be saved. Keep that in mind and stay faithful to your sacred heart devotions and to your, your home enthronement devotions as a family as well. You have entered in, now remain there in great peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.